Hello, I think we should be live. Yay. Happy American Thanksgiving, everybody. For those of you who are celebrating today, um, give it a few seconds for everything to connect to YouTube. And then we'll get into what we're doing today. I wanted to go live for a little bit and say hello. So feel free to chat in the comments. Um, there we go. Okay. I'm seeing we're connected now. Yay. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Happy American Thanksgiving. We are celebrating at home, just our family. The kids are currently outside. We had a very early morning. We're going to get into some romance recommendations. Um, but if some of the food is cooking. Let us know if, or let me know if you are, uh, if you're celebrating today, what's on the menu. We are not doing the traditional turkey. We're doing lamb which should be delicious. So that's currently cooking Then I need to make mashed potatoes. The kids are at the park. We put up our Christmas tree this morning. It's It's been fun. We cleaned a closet, like, it's all good. So I thought I would come on here <laughs> and go live to give you guys some recommendations because the Romance Takeover Readathon is starting very soon and I'm excited for it. Hello, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, so if any of you guys are celebrating, I know like it's an American holiday, so some of you are not from here, but if you are, let me know if you're celebrating, how you're celebrating, what you're planning on having. Let me know, we can chat about it. And then I wanna give you some recommendations for some of the prompts for the readathon. Hi, Danielle, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Cheryl. Hey, Isabella, happy Thanksgiving. Oh, cooking a turkey by yourself, good luck. That's, that's great. Yeah, I like lamb because I've found a good way to cook it in the crock pot, which is easy and delicious. And that's, that's what we are doing. Happy Thanksgiving, tofurkey on the menu. Love it. Awesome. Well, cool. So hopefully this will be like a fun little interlude. I don't know how long we'll actually stay on here, but the kids are outside for a while and I was like, let's let's go live and say hi to everybody. So let me know if you guys are planning on participating. I had my TBR go up, was it yesterday? Probably yesterday <laughs> for the Romance Takeover Readathon. It starts November 29th and it's two weeks long. And what's kind of cool about it is it's a build your own TBR readathon. So I'm going to actually share my screen and show you guys this. And we're going to talk about it. Uh, hold on one second. Where are you? That's the one I want. Yes. Ta -da. <laughs> okay, so for the Romance Takeover Readathon, these are the prompts. And then what's kind of cool about it is you can, um, ah, oh no. Of course, this is not going to work. Hold on. You know what? Let me, let me find a better way of doing this. <laughs> Maybe if I download it, this will work better. Let's try it. It's, sorry, technical issues here, guys. Um, okay, so if I open as it as a PDF, is it going to let it work better? Let's try this. Sorry, one sec. Share screen. Here we go. Ah, there we go. I think this is going to be better. Sorry about that. Okay, so. This is the build your own bingo board sort of deal. And you can take any of those prompts and fill in your own bingo board. I showed you guys mine in my video yesterday. And so I'll mention some of the prompts I'm gonna fulfill, but I thought I would give you guys some recommendations for a variety of these prompts in case you are looking for things to fill up your TBR. And we can chat back and forth. So those of you who are watching, if you have recommendations for some of these, because there are definitely a couple categories that I read less widely in. So if you have things, feel free to chime in and we can post those up on the screen. But I thought it would be a fun way to talk about some great romances. So I've pulled some stuff. I have probably more in my head. Let's look through this. So one thing that I love about this is some of the challenges are social challenges. So they're not all reading challenges. Um, as you can see, attend a live reading sprint. I'm hosting two of them, which are now up. Um, if you wanna save them or bookmark them, um, the 
that they should be, I mean, obviously like they haven't happened yet, but I created the event for them. One of them is, is it Tuesday? I think it's, I think it's Tuesday. And then um, post a TBR, which I did. <laughs> so if you want to post a TBR, that can be on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter, wherever. If you want to post your TBR, it counts. Find, uh, follow the hosts. So that's myself. And there's a list of others, which I can tell you everybody, because I feel like I'm going to forget somebody if I don't look at it. So give me a second. Where's my announcement? Uh, there it is. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> the hosts are Jen from the Book Refuge, got Who Picked This Book, Happy For Now, uh, Library of Tomes, and In Love and Words. So those are, those are the hosts. So one of the things you can do is follow the hosts. Hey Tara, happy Thanksgiving. Find two new romance YouTubers to follow under a thousand subs. Post an Instagram post of one of your reads. Um, so those I like because they're all not about reading books. They're about doing other things. So those are things. All right, with that said, let's go. Uh, read a romance that's been on your TBR for six months or more. This depends on your TBR. In case you missed it, the one that I am using for that prompt, because that is one that I'm putting on my bingo, bard, bingo board, is Hearth and Home by Rebel Carter, which is a historical set in the American kind of Old West with a male, male order groom, a uh, male order husband, which I think is pretty cool, and a cinnamon roll hero. So this is one that I'm planning on reading that fits two of those prompts, among others, but, but it, one of them is read a cinnamon roll hero. For me, it's been on my TBR more than six months, but it fits that. This would also fit a prompt of reading a diverse book. The author is black and she writes about primarily people of color. Um, and I don't know about this book particularly, but I know some of the other books in the series also have queer characters. So that's an option. Read a five-star predicted read. Again, that's gonna depend on you. Read a book recommended by a host. So you could read anything on my TBR, anything we talk about in the live stream today or something recommended by any of the other hosts and I get recommendations from them. So there's some really good ones there. Okay, read a cinnamon roll hero. So this is one recommendation. If you have recommendations for a cinnamon roll hero, feel free to put them in the chat. But this is one apparently that I've not yet read. My favorite cinnamon roll hero is Rafe, um, a buff male nanny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. Rafe is, such a cinnamon roll. <laughs> like he's so sweet and so great with the kids that he's nannying for. And he's this like big tattooed guy who's actually like super kind and sweet. And if you're wondering, because I get this question a lot, what a cinnamon roll hero is, it, it's basically what it sounds like. It's somebody who might look intimidating or tough on the outside, but is like an ooey gooey cinnamon roll on the inside. That's 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 pretty much what, what this is. I love a cinnamon roll hero. Um, this one is a great example. Again, feel free to contribute if you have other suggestions of heroes that you would consider to be cinnamon rolls. Who else? I'm trying to think if I could have other really good. Okay, um, so another one that I would actually put on that list is Take a Hint Danny Brown. I think we have a cinnamon, pretty cinnamon roll hero here. Um, and this is a nice one because I, it's it's on the top 10. It's one of the finalists for Romance for the Goodreads Choice Awards, deservedly so. I would love to see this win. I think it's so, so good. Um, yeah, I love Talia Hibbert. So this one would be a diverse romance. This one has a cinnamon roll hero. Um, it's a recent release, which is another thing. So that's something you could try. Does anybody else have a good cinnamon roll hero recommendation? Trying to see if I have anything else. Like, I don't think I have. I mean, I've probably read others, but those are my main, the main ones I would suggest off the top of my head that are kind of like stand out. So, again, feel free to recommend others. Okay, read a bad boy romance. So, look, I <laughs> this is not something I read a lot of. So, if you have recommendations for a good bad boy romance, let me know. Um, 
but I think often like the ones where you have for historical romances, something where it's like a rake is the hero are good options. Why did I not pull something like this? I know I have read, I have read books that would count for it. Um, but clearly this is just like not my primary type of romance guys is like the bad boy. I think I kind of decided I didn't love that. So if you have bad boy romance recommendations, feel free to leave them in the description. I don't like, I mean, I guess you could say, um, okay, so maybe what I would say is some of the Psy Changeling books by Nalini Singh might be good because some of them are a, a little bit more edgy, at least. Like, I don't know if they would quite count as bad boy, but you get some more edgy heroes. So that might be something to try for that prompt. Hello, hello. Hey, okay, here we go. So I've not read the Guild Hunter series. Hey, Isabella, but this is great. The first book in Alini Singh's Guild Hunter series, Love Interest is definitely a bad boy, bad, well, a bad man. Yeah, I mean, I, I would hope so. But yeah, great recommendation. I think in general, she has heroes that are more like this. And I've heard good things about the Guild Hunter series, but that's not one that I have read personally yet. So there's a good one. Um, read an audiobook. There are a lot of great audiobooks. And actually, the Psy Changeling series by Nalini Singh, I think, is pretty good on audio. That's how I've listened to them. Courtney Milan is also a favorite of mine, and um, her books are really good on audio. And if you're looking for a good holiday romance to throw in, um, A Kiss for Midwinter is fantastic. It's like, and it's short, so short novellas are always great for readathons. Um, and this could count as a diverse book. She is biracial. Um, what else? I'm trying to think like what else would be this would fall into. Hello, happy Thanksgiving. But that would that would be <clears throat> another recommendation for that. For yeah good audiobooks. There's, there's a lot of ones that are, that are good. Library. You can do an audiobook and library together and like knock it out that way. You know, <laughs> it's like news overdrive or something. Hey, Shay. Yay. Yes. And you should share some recommendations too, because you read stuff that I don't read as much of. So I feel like <laughs> you should contribute to this conversation. I'm kind of like going through them. So if you have any recommendations to Shay, we've gone through um, like a cinnamon roll hero or a bad boy romance. If you have any good recs for that, leave them in the comments because I know you read more stuff. Read a historical romance. I love a historical romance. It's probably my favorite thing. I tend to read a lot of these. Um, so Courtney Milan. And actually I would recommend if you are looking to get into romance, particularly historical romance, I think Courtney Milan is a really great gateway because she has a lot of plot. She's got really smart heroines. She's got strong heroes who aren't alpha male. Like, I just think her books are really, really well written and smart, and she's a good, a good entry point. Yeah, if you have a specific recommendation request, feel free to ask if I can help. I'm happy to. <coughs> Um, yes, Shay, I would love to have you jump on. Hold on. Okay, guys, give me one sec. And I, um, okay. Yeah, Shay, hold on a second and I will. Ah, what did I do? <laughs> okay, hold on. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, Marie, if you have a specific recommendation, Feel free to drop your question and I will see if I can help. And Shay, I am on Discord looking for you. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I sent you the link if you wanna hop on. That would be great. Hello. Okay. <laughs> yes, thank you. Happy American Thanksgiving to everybody. As people are, are hopping on. Shay will hopefully be on here too in a moment and she should have some good recommendations for you guys. Ah, a period romance where the main woman is a nurse. 
Oh, interesting. Um, that is a good question. Let me a nurse. I should, like give that some thought. I wonder if Shay will have any good recommendations for you. Can you think of some? Okay, so I well, okay, this is not exactly what you asked for, but the hero in a kiss for midwinter is a doctor. So that might be kind of a similar thing, and it's a great novella. Yeah, how is everybody's day going? Feel free to drop, or if you're cooking anything. Oh, here's Shay. Yay. <coughs> Hi. Hello. Hi. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah, I'm glad you could join. Awesome. So we have our- nothing to do, and my husband's playing games, so might as well, right? <laughs> My kids are outside and we had a very busy morning and got a lot done and did our Christmas tree and like have stuff cooking. So I was like, you know what? Let's do a live stream. <laughs> very nice. Yeah. So we got a request. Do you have okay. any suggestions for this? A historical romance where the heroine is a nurse. Hmm. Have I read any where they're a nurse? Yeah. I was trying to like. Where they like I nurse them back to health, but not a yeah. true like nurse. So I feel like I have, but I can't think of it. Like this one, the hero is a doctor. Oh, I have another one where the hero is a doctor. Tempest is oh, like a okay. great example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like a nurse, that's, I can't think of anything off the top of my head specifically. I think one of my Grace Burroughs ones, she was a nurse. I know I've read one and I just can't, like, I can't think of it. <laughs> I can't come up with one. I'll keep thinking though. Okay. We'll think if we think of another one, we'll, we'll let you know. Cooked all yesterday and had Thanksgiving yesterday. Nice. I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, so where Shane, are we at on your prompt? Okay. List here? So do you have any recommendations for cinnamon roll heroes or bad boy romances? Um, I honestly, I don't read too many bad boys where I would like actually recommend them. Like I read them and enjoy them, but most people won't. So I don't think I'm going to touch that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But when it comes to cinnamon rolls, um, one of my favorites is Samson from the right swipe by Alicia Rye. He is a total okay. girl. Love him. Um, and Zaf from take a hint, Danny Brown. He's a total cinnamon roll. Love him to pieces. Mm-hmm. I, sorry, my romance shelf is like right here, so I keep like looking. That's, that's fine. I I understand. Um, Marcus from Spoiler Alert. Yeah, yeah he's a cinnamon roll. He's kind of a cinnamon roll. Yeah, fair he enough. is. He he's, he's the lovable idiot. Like I just that's love. True. Him. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, he's a good one. Trying to think if there are any others where they really like stand out as a cinnamon roll, and I love them. I mean, I have yeah. also for that but I mean the ones that I had mentioned earlier were um Zephyr from Take a Hint Danny Brown mm -hmm. and Rafe like they're yeah, both I still definite. need to read Rafe it's on my list you haven't read Rafe yet oh mm -hmm. my god it's so high on my list it's so good I'm oh you so know what Adam sure. from the Ray Kess, the guy in the Ray Kess, he's quite oh a, I haven't quite read that one him. okay yeah, I read that one just recently I can understand why People don't like that one, but honestly, Adam is a total cinnamon roll. He's so sweet. It's a single parent romance where he's a widow or he's a widower. Yeah. And he's got two. Parents. He's a total cinnamon roll. Love him. Yeah. Yes. Lovable idiot is that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Um, yeah. I think I read a lot of beta heroes, which I love. Um, so, but, but there are some good cinnamon rolls. Okay. So historical romances, I had kind of started as I think okay. Courtney Milan is like a good one of a couple good places to start. Uh huh. Courtney Milan's and a good place to start. And I think Tessa Dare is the next best place to start. I agree. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for a good place to start with Tessa Dare, I would recommend, um, I think a couple of my favorites that I think are really funny. When a Scott ties the knot is pretty good and it's a standalone. Mm -hmm. And then um, the Duchess deal. I love if you like a I marriage love that whole of series. The Girl Meets Duke series is solid. I love it. It's, and it's very good. They don't really tie together. It's only really lightly. So you 
really read any of them that sound interesting. Yeah. But totally okay. Yeah, they're friends with each other, but they like the plots are pretty separate. Right. They're they're very like close up. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Kind of. I mean, or beta. I mean. Yeah, he's got a true cinnamon roll. I mean, he's got that bad boy side to him. I mean, he is mm-hmm. as court. Let's be real here. But <laughs> he's great. We love him. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Really sweet hero. He's great. But yeah. I don't think he's quite a cinnamon roll. Him though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I tend to like the like the the nerdy heroes. But, oh, but so do I. I. Give, me, give me a good nerd. Give me a tall nerdy man with glasses. I'm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm done. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, yeah. Um, Actually, if you want, if you like a nerdy hero. And you want a good historical, um, I would, the first book in this series, so I don't own the first one, um, but My Fake Rake by Eva Lee. Yes, my is... name is. <laughs> Sorry, it's my peanut gallery of a husband right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, but My Fake Rake by Eva Lee, which is the first book in this series, this is a great book too, but, uh, but the first one has like a nerdy hero and heroine uh-huh. it's mm-hmm. great i love it um, um I think another there. Read okay again. place great. to start great. in historical but honestly be um any rogue will do by bethany bennett it's a newer title it's a first in a series it's a debut but it's a five-star read it was so good a really good groveling hero like yeah a good grovel and love it was it so good like start yeah. to finish it was funny it was witty and it read modern enough that it's really easy so you're not getting caught up in like historical speak which can be right really sometimes when you're first like starting out yeah yeah for sure um interesting historical dual narrative huh that's that's an interesting you don't run choice. into those too often no i'm not sure it's not my favorite thing um, yeah. usually it's got like a time travel element, but some people really love it. Uh, another good recommendation if you want to learn actual history is read some Beverly Jenkins. Oh yeah. This is my favorite of hers. She has a lot of really good ones, but I just, I adored this cause like the hair. I'm actually the- finally going to read my first queen Bev. Like it's my next read. Oh, yay. Yay. You have her. Oh, her books are so good. So my first um, one's going to be through yeah. the storm because it's the first in that okay. series. So. Okay. Okay. She is wonderful. You will always learn something because she does a ton of research into actual history that doesn't get talked about with people of color. And she writes great romances. This one has one of my favorite heroines of all time. She's funny and spunky. And um, this is a mail order bride with a widowed doctor who has a young daughter. And it's also very funny. It's it's great. Love it, love it. Mm-hmm. Grovel, yes. you say, added to my TBR. Yes. Any Rogue it, yeah. Will Do by Bethany Bennett. It is so like flying under the radar in the historical romance like community. But man, it is one of my favorite reads of the year. That's great. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if I have like other... Yeah, I think those are like my big... Like I good big places I think to start if you haven't read right because some of the other will, ones like, some of the other like big popular ones you can run into some really bad first like I read my first Lisa yeah Clayfus, and I chose the wrong Lisa Claypool to start oh, no oh. so it was bad <laughs> but yeah and, like these ones we know are safe. <laughs> like yeah there yeah. and I think especially the newer Tessa Dare stuff she's just so funny like her book, yeah. Make they are de- they have that rom com feel to them, and yeah. so it's really easily they're easily consumable. Like typically, when read a Tessa Dare, it's a one sitting. Like I very rarely like stop in the middle of those because I'm just <laughs> enjoying so them great. too much. Yeah, they're so fun. Um, okay, although I will, so I will say, I for a historical romance, my TBR, I'm going to be reading The Duke and I. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck to you. Um, thank you. I, I have heard there are some issues with this first one, but I really want to at least read the first book before Bridgerton, the series, comes out on Netflix. Okay, so, so in my opinion, most of the book is a five-star book. There okay. is a particular moment that's a two-star moment. So I settled okay. at a three and a half. That's okay. how I handled my okay. rating of that one. Okay, fair enough. Which, th- I've heard that, so I'm glad 
I like I kind of know going in, but I also loved this cover. I think it's so pretty. The um, the show tie-in is really pretty. It is pretty also. It's like too. some yeah. of the show tie-in books are really like cheesy and campy, but they kept that one really like pretty and elegant. And I really appreciated that. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm excited for the show. If you guys haven't seen the trailer for Bridgerton, oh, I've seen it's the trailer, coming out. And I've read yeah. the do- now. I do want to read at least the Viscount who loved me before the show okay. started. Maybe it looks so good. My poor husband, I was like, guess what we're doing Christmas night? <laughs> <laughs> Watching Bridgerton. Trying to do whatever all day. And you know, I, I mean, I'm I pretty sure my day. husband's going back to work the next day. So okay. just binge it the next day if I have to. Yeah. But well, I like I can't binge stuff because of the kids. So right. I'm like, after the kids are in bed though, Christmas night, we can watch a couple of <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be fun. Um, For sure. Yeah. Sophie Kinsella is very popular. Mm-hmm. Watching the new Wonder Woman on Christmas. Nice. That sounds like fun. Love it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's see. Read a book outside your comfort zone. I am not doing that prompt. Are you? I don't know what you're doing for this, but. Um, when it comes to reading outside your comfort zone, my comfort zone is really big. So <laughs> hard to find something outside of it because I'm pretty much down to try anything. Okay. So it might be I one of those things where yeah. I might end up picking up Elisa Kleypas because I really didn't enjoy the first one. I'm yeah. not percent sure. <laughs> like, you know, it, that would be something where it's like give an author a second chance or. Right, right. You've been hesitant because of the hype of a book. So you pick that one up. So you could technically use the Duke and I for that as well. That's true. That's true. You're okay with hype, but you still get leery, especially after you and I have been burned on a couple of really popular books, like one to watch that really isn't even a romance. It's more women's fiction. And yes, anyway, we won't get into that discussion today. If it wins (laughs) the Goodreads Choice Awards, I'm going going to to riot and like throw my gosh. (laughs) <laughs> you and I both. We will be honestly. I hope it's take a hint, Danny Brown, because that's the only. One I would be thrilled. Really like yes. I loved. Yeah. I loved it. It was so good. That was that's mm-hmm. a really good one. Doctor Who. Yeah, I don't know. Yes, that there is. Oh, I've seen promos that it is going to happen. So there you go. Awesome. Okay. Well, for. So for me, there are definitely things that are outside my comfort zone and I will occasionally try things. And then usually I'm like, yeah, there's a reason that's outside my comfort zone. But there are exceptions. (laughs) Right. And I think that's Um, what ended up like just being game to pretty much try anything. Yeah. I like, I don't occasionally try things. I am less into the dark romance stuff, like not really my deal usually. I'm not. I have to be in the right mood for the dark. Like I can't read dark. Yeah. And there are certain authors where I know I'm okay with how they do dark. So I gravitate towards the ones that I know are like safe for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I, it's, it's not really my favorite thing. And also if I'm going to be reading something dark, I'd probably rather read a dark fantasy. <laughs> Yeah, (laughs) I just like I like my romance to be on the lighter side. Um, And oh, good. Somebody's excited about the Doctor Who thing. So, yay. Uh, Hey, Brian. Hey, Uh, we have an author. If you want a good fantasy. Welcome. Good, like classic feeling fantasy. He's got a great Mm -hmm. series, um, actually. So cool. Yeah. No, I think that's actually a great recommendation. I do think it's important. I, I think that's a very good recommendation because there's a lot of romance authors who do it really well. And so that's, that's, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So one book that I read and ended up liking reasonably well, that was definitely outside my comfort zone was soul to keep by Rebecca Weatherspoon. It's very ridiculous and campy. So like, it's a little out there. Um, and there were things in it that I was like, wow, this is, I mean, it was still outside my comfort zone, but like, I thought it was done well, I guess if that makes sense. Right. If you want something, this is about a um, sorority of lesbian vampires. There you go. <laughs> and some of them are also like shapeshifters and um, yeah, it's a little out there, but 
that could be something to try. It, it would also mm-hmm. be a diverse book. Right. So if you're looking for something like dark, um, there's a dark, dark historical series that's really popular. Basically anything by Kerrigan Bird is going to have like dark undertones and dark heroes. So mm-hmm. if you're looking for to combine things, dark and historical, um, the uh, Victorian Rebels series. So the first book's The Highwaymen, like that whole series is really fantastic. I've really enjoyed all of the ones I've read. I've read six of the seven. Okay. Great. And her new series, I call it the Red Rogues. <laughs> I think it's called the Devil in Her Bed series. Like, I don't remember the actual name of the series. I just call it the Red Rogues series. Um, the first book ha- is how to, how to lose a Duke in 10 days or how to love a Duke in 10 days. How to Love a Duke in 10 Days. Interesting. Um, that's the first book. And then the second one's All Scott and Bothered. That series is really good too. But again, you're dealing with dark undertones too. Yeah. Eric and Burns. I have All Scott and Bothered on my TBR actually. I added that one recently. Oh, it's so Jen. good. I, yeah. It's so well, good. So, and, and I will recommend. And plus size guys. heroine. We love a plus size heroine. Mm-hmm. And it, the well. way she's oh. written is really great. The awesome. cover doesn't do her, her body justice, obviously. <laughs> They got a skinny model for that. Yeah. She is a plus size heroine and she's fantastic. We love her. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And I um, got that off the recommendation from Jen at the Book Refuge, who's one of the other hosts of the Readathon. So, guys, I'm going to say if you're looking for something that's going to be outside your comfort zones for dark romance, go to her channel because she reads a lot of it and has a lot of dark. Yeah. And she does a lot of great recommendation videos. Like often mm-hmm. I'll watch them just because I'm curious and I'm like, I'm not going to read these books, but I will listen. The to amount of screenshots <laughs> I take from her channel is ridiculous. Because yeah. what I do when I'm watching somebody's like recommendation video, I'll just screenshot it and then I'll go through later and add them to like my Amazon wish list so I can like buy them as I go along when I'm like at mm-hmm. the book, pull up that list. And it's like, okay, I've got a little, yeah. extra. what can I pick up today? Yeah. Yeah. She has a lot of great recommendations and I've like gotten some from her. So even though some of our tastes don't overlap as much, like we're like, we're like a Venn diagram. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, ah, this is a good question. How? Um, I think it depends on how your fantasy is pitched. If it's pitched as yeah. a fantasy romance, go as hard as you want. If it's pitched as a fantasy with a romance subplot, then Mm -hmm. I think be careful and think about the audience you're writing for. Yeah. I mean, I think, I I think if we're talking about just in a romance novel, there's so much variety. And I think that's a good thing because readers want different things. And so you have everything from a completely clean romance where maybe they like kiss and that's it. And um, frequently with a book like that, they get together at the end of the book and that's kind of, you know, Mm -hmm. you just don't see beyond that all the way up to, you know, full blown erotica. Um, And then you have a lot of things in between, right? You might have closed horror scenes, you might, and then you have something like, um, like I would say, Jasmine Guillory is kind of interesting because her books are not closed door, but the just the the language that she uses is is vague. So like if you want to look at how to write an on the page sex scene that isn't overly graphic, I think the way that she does it is um, is is kind of what that looks like. And then I think it, it just kind of goes from there. Like there's a lot of variety. And I don't know within romance, I think when you get into it, you learn who writes what <laughs> and like what you gravitate toward what you with. like. Yeah. And um, see, for me, think- it depends. Sometimes I want those really clean, like, you know, closed door kinds of romances. And other times, mm-hmm. all the smutty things where they're doing it as often as humanly possible. So right. all are acceptable in the romance community. But yeah. in the fantasy world, again, you have to think a lot about your audience. Are you doing it for a YA audience? Right. Like, at that point, I would be really careful. But if you're doing it for an adult yeah. audience, um, it would depend on the context, I think. Yeah. Um, so this is such, such an interesting conversation. And as it pertains to people, be, you would... Uh, um, so I... So, okay. So this is interesting. So I actually prefer it to switch back and forth. Like I... I don't mind I, the switch back and forth either. No. I think it's interesting to get it from both perspectives, especially because I guess this is the thing is I think a good, 
Um, if you're not doing erotica, like if you're doing an actual romance narrative, right? Like a good sex scene should be something that is moving the relationship forward emotionally and moving the plot forward. It shouldn't just be about, okay, they're having sex now. There should be something that's developing or changing in the relationship. And so I think getting both perspectives can be helpful for that of seeing like how they're coming up to it and encountering it and like what's kind of like what's going on. So that would be- but There are ways to do yeah. that where you're not like taking three chapters for the sex scene too. Like, right, you know, absolutely. Yeah, small yeah. breaks yeah. where it's clear that it's like a break and a switch, but. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, interesting. So I think, I think reading romances is like a good way to um, figure that to get, out to, to get to figure out how this does so like I think Tessa Dare does a great job of it and so frequently scenes like this will go across two chapters mm -hmm. not always but often she'll do that and so you'll get kind of like a female perspective up to a certain point in the and scene then it's a male perspective. and then it'll jump to the other perspective and so and sometimes it'll be like one scene is all one perspective and one scene is all the other perspective but I think she does a good job of like finding a breaking point and and ha having it like work into the narrative so that you're getting that character development. So that would be Agreed. kind of my recommendation. Um, let's see, okay, we have some other things. Hey, Jessica. Hi. Um, trying to mix queer lit readathon prompts and romance. Pr oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, best queer romance you've read so far. Okay, that's a great question. Um, um, like best, best is always hard. Yes, best is asking best a lot. Is, <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so I don't have, uh, okay. So for a history, I'm like, where are the books that I want? I don't have this, the the queer book in this series out, but um, Alyssa Cole wrote a novella Mm -hmm. in her Reluctant Royal series that's really great. Yeah, um, that's, uh, Once Ghosted, Twice Shy. That one. Um, that's a really good like female, female novella. Mm -hmm. um, an author who I think writes oh, writes some good things, um, or Adriana Herrera, I think is good too. If you, Especially if you want something that's got deeper thematic content. She is a social worker. Um, and a lot of that like works its way into her books, I think. So she, so this series is primarily male, male romances for the most part, except for one of the books. And she writes really good, good characters and has some other things. Mm -hmm. TJ Klune uh, is always going to be TJ up there Klune, for, I, like, I have, I have a TJ Klune here somewhere. For I mean, anything want, on, on the queer spectrum for sure. If you want a really super sweet hug of a book that's a fantasy romance this is not steamy at all um house in the cerulean sea i love it like some people don't like it because it's slow paced and character driven and really sweet and they want more conflict but like i love it so much it's like such a happy book um mm -hmm. and so honestly really in 2020 we all need books that are going to give us a hug because it's Look, been a crap of a year that's I mean, you are not wrong. That's so a true. A queer book that I read that's kind of wild. Um, well, it's a series. It's called the <laughs> Piratical Harem series. It's an all male harem on a pirate ship. Oh my gosh. Wild. I got it on KU. I had a really fun time, <laughs> but it's just it's just wild and they're basically doing it constantly. So oh just my God. For. I I stumbled <laughs> onto it on accident. I'm like pirate harem what i'm curious and so oh, I, i'm like you know what this is fun i'm just gonna read these they weren't the best thing i've ever read but man were they <laughs> um for historicals i think olivia Waite is also doing some good things um mm -hmm. so i read uh it's olivia Waite and Kat Link. sebastian that really do yeah they're both doing a lot yeah but um yeah the one i read this year from my olivia olivia Waite was um the, the lady's guide to waspish widows or the, the uh -huh. what is it it was the it first was one in that series the celestial mechanics one right? yeah 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 um so yeah i really like that so th there's a lot there's definitely a lot of things out there so hopefully that's helpful um mm -hmm. yes the fourth wall break those are fun sometimes hey steph yes 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 good yeah so hopefully those are some I good recommendations yeah, for sure. Yes. 
Okay, so let's see what else we have. An older woman romance. I, guys, I have actually an entire video <laughs> that I recently put out um, of a whole bunch of romances with characters who are 30 plus, and some of them include much older characters. Um, Olivia Waite's book, The Waspish Widows one. Okay, let me look up the exact title because I feel like I'm not getting it quite right. But that one is great mm -hmm. because it's two middle-aged women. Um, it's a historical and it's Olivia it's really... Day's older heroines as well. And they're not always, okay. apps, but they are usually over the age of 30. Yeah. So like, um, spoiler alert is a great one. Our heroine is 36 and the hero is almost 40. So, oh, the mm -hmm. Karen feeding of waspish widows. That's what it is. There you that's go. The, the Olivia Waite one. Um, so that's, that's a really good option, uh, for, an older woman romance but yeah and then there's her night video. with the duke that everybody's read i'm reading it like next week but her night with the duke what is that one um it's it's an older woman younger man age gap romance where oh, okay he's engaged to her stepdaughter but she doesn't know it and they have a one night stand and then she finds out that it's him and then things go from there yikes oh goodness okay but she's a widow and she travels. Is 30 the mark for old look? Okay. In when my it comes video... to romances, anything over 30 is considered an old woman <laughs> because, you know, most of the romance is written in their mid 20s. I know, I know, I know. Um, this, I do have a range in there. Like, there's a lot in their 30s, and then there are some with older characters, mm -hmm. but like, so many are in their 20s and especially historicals. That was why part of why I put a bunch of historicals on there because often you get these like 18 year old heroines. And I was like, if you right. want to read some older characters. Crazy. Um, so I do have some who are more like middle-aged or even actually um, Courtney Milan. I have not read it yet, but um, L okay. LB Dunbar books are all mature romances. That's great. Thank you. Um, but Courtney Milan has one that I haven't read yet that's a historical, oh, let me look it up, look up the title of it, I forget what it is, but it's uh, elderly women and it's female, female. So they're both widowed and have grown children. And um, hold on, let me, Courtney, well, I just love Courtney Milan. I'm just gonna, you know, I'll recommend all her books. I've not read anything from her I've disliked. I'm, I, she is so my deal. Like she is exactly. Oh, here we go. Mrs. Martin's incomparable adventure. Uh, and like the the cover model is like an older woman with like gray hair, and it's oh you know, goodness, it's a novella. So that's yeah. that's a great a great option. Um, let's see. The idea of you by Robin Lee. Her heroine is thirty nine to forty. Heroes twenty two. Wow. Okay. Okay. So there's an, for an, for an, woman, wow. an age gap for you. Wow. There's an age gap. Yep. Yep. Oh, senior citizen romance. <laughs> you know what? The, you they remember? deserve love too. That's all I'll say. So do you remember a while back, there was like, for a while, there was this whole thing that was going around of like, they were having an STD crisis in nursing homes oh, because yeah. so many of the that. senior citizens were like, you know, hooking up and not using protection. And so they had to do like all of these like courses. So I mean, this is the thing, like everybody is, you know, Everybody, I love, I love it. Um, Probably oh, smart. <laughs> Jessica, that's great. Probably that's smart. Good. That's good. Senior citizen romance. Oh my goodness, that's smart. Um, but yeah, and you know, I enjoy it. Like, like often it's somebody who has lost their first spouse. And I think being in my 30s, I'm enjoying those kinds of books, actually. Like a kind of, I don't know. I like. No, I totally agree. Like you know. I love like single parent romances a lot. Because they do mm -hmm. a little bit older, and there's the dynamic with the kids too, and that just yeah. adds another layer yeah. that I enjoy. I know not everybody enjoys that, but mm -hmm. I should. Yeah, I will say um, keywords to look for if you are a historical romance reader and you want to read about older heroines. The keywords you want to look for are spinster and widow. If you're reading about a spinster or a widow, chances are you're going to get somebody who's like at least thirty. If not, you know. Yeah, in the rake S, she's 30 as well. Okay. So that, that's kind of what you want to look for. There's a movie, Our Souls at Night, that was based in a book. Cool. Awesome. No. 40 Love. Oh, okay. 40 Love by Olivia Date is an age gap. Yeah. So we can talk about age gap romances. 
Um, oh, so I read a, no, there's a big novella bind up that just came out called um, Duke I'd Like to Duke F. Duke I'd Like to F. <laughs> It's fine. I'm like, so glad I want to read that because, like, it's all of great. the authors, I'm like, yes, I want to read this. It's a, it's a good, I had an ERG of it. It's a good bind up. So, one thing to know is because I had heard people say, I don't really like short stories. They're not short stories. Like, the physical book is like over 600 it's pages. Huge. They're, no, they're novellas. So, it's five novellas, and three of them are age gap romances one of them with an older woman, and two of them with older men. So, if you're that, you know, they are quite steamy. <laughs> So I have, but they're they're well done. So I have to do a review. Well, considering the lineup of authors, I am not surprised. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let's look, be real. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So like Sierra Simone, this is probably the thing I've gotten along best with her because I think she toned things down slightly. Like you get uh -huh. hints at some of her usual because she gets a little out there for me. Oh yeah. Usually, <laughs> I'm like you get references to it, but it's not as much of it on the page. So I was like, okay, I can, I can, I can, I can go with this. <laughs> but I know a lot mm -hmm. of people love her stuff too. Um, in your forties, if it's written well, don't mind the age of the character. Great. Yeah. I mean, I agree. Each age has pros and cons. I just think it's nice to have some variety. Uh, and I had seen people request, that's part of why I made the videos. I'd had people asking like, where do I find, where do I go to find romance with characters who are not in their twenties? I mean, I read books with characters in their twenties too, and that's great, but yeah. I, think, I think it's nice to have some, some variety. Some variety. Yeah, I, so this is so true. The This is part of why I like the widows too, is because usually they have a lot more autonomy. They might have financial independence. And especially when you're in a time where women tend to have a lot less power and the power dynamics are an issue. Historicals with women. Widows are, tend to really kind of. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree with that. That's, that's a very good point. Oh, there's a new one that I read. It's coming out on Tuesday. Um, 10 Things I Hate About the Duke. It's about an older okay. woman. She just turned 30. And she's like this vigilante, like women's movement kind of woman. Mm -hmm. And she ends up with a guy um, who's a Duke, who's just been a total like, you know, drunken mess most of his life. And he finally decides to settle down, but his best friend ends up like, falling in love with the girl he had picked out and she liked him, liked the friend and not him. And so oh, like, wow. it's been like five days and he proposes to our now heroine. She's like, are you crazy? No. Yeah. And so yeah. it's their whole dynamic. It's really good. Enemies to lovers. Lots of fun. Awesome. By Loretta Chase. Yeah. Yeah. Michelle. I mean, yeah. I, I agree. Same. I mean, I, you know, I like I like both, but um, a historic one without a duke. Yes, yes. Beverly there are some Jenkins. without dukes. Not many. Well, you usually well, got to go to the Highlands to find something without a duke. In the Highlands, when the Scott ties a knot. Um, but I would say, in general, if you um, Beverly Jenkins books are all set in like the Americas mm -hmm. or the West Indies, and so they usually do not have dukes. They're like often. I mean, some of them come from wealthy families. Some of them don't. Like, she has, like, a wide variety. So her books are good right. historical fiction or historical romances for that. Um, also, uh, who is it? There's somebody who writes stuff set in the Gilded Age, like, in New York City. Um, oh, oh, oh. Joanna Shoup. Oh, yeah. She does, too. I was thinking of, but there's somebody else who does. Anything U.S.-based, you're not typically going to run into a Duke. Yeah. So basically, yes, things set in the United States are better for that in terms of, but yeah, a lot of them have dupes, which is kind of hilarious. There are ones mm. that Joe, oh, actually Courtney Milan um, also has a lot more variation in the types of characters she's writing. They are set in the UK, but many of them do not have nobility. Uh, so she might be another one, or at least not dukes. Like she has a lot more variety. Like you know, if I'm going to recommend it again, Kiss for Midwinter, it's a town doctor. <laughs> so there are, they're, they're out there. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, the she is. Yes, she is. She's Spinster. older and she's also <laughs> plus size. Yes. That's a good one. That's a good option. And, and, um, the hero is the bastard of a Duke, but is not a Duke himself. So mm -hmm. there's that. Alyssa Cole. Yes. Alyssa oh, Cole yes, for everything. That's true. Yeah, yeah. 
but she, no, that's a good recommendation. Alyssa, all of Alyssa Cole's historicals are fantastic. And she does, she does, so, I have one. Oh, I'm like, these are like a little hard to reach. Okay. The first one in her historical series is an extraordinary union, right? Yeah. And then she also has a bunch of novellas, a bunch of historical novellas that are all really, really good. Um, So like one of them is set during the civil rights movements. And that one was really interesting. It's an interracial romance between a Jewish man and a black woman. And it's kind of like dealing anyway. So like some of them are a little more, she has a lot more serious topical things that she addresses, but Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. When relationships become complex and might be navel gazing, which might be difficult to avoid when writing about mature protagonists. Huh. That's interesting. Um Never I thought mean, like that. yeah. I mean, maybe I think I think it depends on the tone that you keep. Like if it's a if it's a lighter tone, um, And I think especially written in third person, you can avoid that where, you know, sometimes it can be more them sort of touching on or recognizing like grief if they've lost a spouse or something like that, but being at a point when the story starts that they're ready to move on and explore new things. And um, so I think there are definitely like a lot of people who do it. Olivia Waite is a great example, actually, to read that for like a good way to to do it and avoid avoid that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, apparently all the t- look <laughs> like people want to complain about historical accuracy and historical <laughs> romance. Like you think there were all of these like handsome young unmarried dukes running around? Like no, right? We you know like, that's not how reality was, and it's fine. No. It's fiction for a reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Um, okay, let's see. So we kind of so we kind of did age gap. gaps and older women at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Um, right after midnight, read a, reread a favorite, <laughs> a favorite romance. Um, so this, again, this is going to depend. This is very individual. So yes, you know who your favorites are, uh, and read a diverse book. So we've been talking throughout this of a lot of diverse books. So a lot of these are written by authors of color featuring queer characters or queer characters of color. There's a lot of great books. A couple others that I'll mention, um, Tracy Livesay. I I read this one by her and it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, like Reese Ryan do. has some really great ones as well that are black love. Mm-hmm. Are fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one. So she writes most like interracial romances primarily, um, mm-hmm. but this one's really good. It's an interesting genre mix because it's got fake dating and friends to lovers um, with like a forced proximity thing too. So that I really like. If you like melodrama and you like your romance a little soapier. Um, Sinithia Williams is fantastic. Oh, love those. Yeah, so Forbidden Promises is really fun. It's very like melodramatic, soapy, mm-hmm. um, but really, really good. Uh, so those are- I really liked the about. second book in that series as well. Yes, right? the second book is good too. I don't own it, but- um, Scandalous but yeah, Secrets are, is what Scandalous that Secrets, called. yeah, they're great. I don't own it either, but I got an early yeah, I, I know, read it and loved it. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, but yeah, this is with it follows an elite black family in the American South and lots of family drama and it's great. It's and fun. politics and stuff too. And politics, yeah. It's, it's, it's a good interesting one. for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Oh, this is a good question. I don't 40 think... Love Centers Around Tennis, and that's okay. um an older one. I've got a couple. Yeah. Of- um, the Good Luck Charm by um, Helena Hunting is a hockey-based one. Let's see. The, the Fear is a former rugby player, and he mm-hmm. runs a uh, like a nonprofit for boys who play rugby. I don't really. I'm not really into. And sports, then there's the whole like. Um, oh, oh, actually, whole series by Alexa Martin, the football ones. Oh yeah, those are really popular. Um, Bromance Book Club. The main oh yeah, he plays baseball. A baseball player. Yeah, so it's not really focused on the sports per se, but it has it as an element of it. So those would be some good, good options. Yeah, I think you're right. It's yeah, it's. I mean, it, it makes it. They fun. very much are. Absolutely. Uh, oh cool. Oh, interesting. Cool. Rosalind James. Okay. Well, hey, gave her a national holiday. That's great. Cool. 
That's yeah, that's Mariana no, yeah, Zapata has her. sports-based ones because you have from mm-hmm. Love, Love, Love that's <laughs> ice skating. Mm-hmm. You have the Wall of Winnipeg and Me, which right. is all hands down is football. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's and, and I've not read from her yet, but I know she's really popular. Oh, she's she is so she, Woburn and they're long. Yes. Yeah. That's what I hear. I like, thrive on them because she's love really good at writing inks. She writes, she writes uh, it. I love that. And yeah, I love that. I love that. There's like Colty a, a where cover. they're dealing with like professional soccer players. Mm-hmm. Mariana Zapata has a ton. Awesome. That's a good, that's a good recommendation. Reading him by Sabrina Bowen and L. Kennedy, a male male hockey romance. Awesome. There you go. Awesome. There's another great recommendation. And then there's the Pucked series. I think again by Helena. Okay. That's hockey. Okay. Oh yeah. There's, there's been a, um, there's, there's been quite a few like, out we're, there. We're writing like, Oh, Farrah Rochon has a, has a football series as well. They're more. Oh, like, okay. Oh, I've and read actually, the I think the first Nalini one Singh, in that series, it was really good. Yeah. And Nalini Singh has a rugby series. Oh, she does. She does. She has a contemporary one with like rugby players. <laughs> I must find this. <laughs> My mind is kind of blown. I need to find this. <laughs> yeah, I've not read them. Um, I think like, yeah, she has like some musician ones and then some rugby ones that are like contemporaries. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, those are good. L. Kennedy's Off yes. Campus and Briar U Series is College Hockey. Okay, so yeah, we're getting lots of uh, lots of things. The leading book is Tempest. Yes, Tempest is. Good I love. There's what a I've heard. on my favorite shelf. I will finally be reading okay. Queen Bess. Like awesome. I'm doing it. I'm proud of myself. Good luck, Brian. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> thanks for stopping by. <laughs> yeah, thanks for hanging out. This has been fun. It's been like created some good good discussions. Yeah, I love that national holiday for. Mm-hmm. Oh, good! Another person who liked him. Yay! Good. Okay, so we have a lot of like good suggestions coming out here this is good and okay yeah we've been talking about diversity through this whole thing and yeah i mean so much of it i both diverse. read more diverse romance yeah. than a lot of creators i mean I i'm still working on reading more because there's tons out yeah. there that i'm finally getting to explore rochelle Allen yeah. is an author with a huge backlist and i'm loving everything i've read of her so far that's great i read two or three of hers this year and really enjoyed them all I think there, I'm starting to see a lot too in the Harlequin different lines. So like these are two that are on my TBR uh-huh. for this one. Um, so Stolen to Warehouse Crown by Marcella Bell. They're very short, but. Um, yeah, A Winning like Season were... by Rochelle Allers is a Harlequin. Okay. I Great. think it's yeah. one of the special editions. So the blue ones. Yeah. And this one's Off Limits by J.C. Lee. So yeah. So there's. Oh, there's I'm a lot an arc of Off Limits. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's on my TBR for, for this month. Um, interested in reading, playing it cool for good plus size representation. Yes. I, so I, I bought an ebook of that <laughs> after. He yeah. Honestly, yeah. Jen's channel is Jen full makes me buy of amazing so recommendations. So recommendations. That you're probably not going to find on most people's channels. She reads yeah. so <laughs> broadly and so diversely yeah. and she's not afraid to read like backlist titles that nobody's talking nope. about, which yeah. is. I love her because it's like I've never even heard of this book, but it sounds amazing. I must read. Yeah. yeah. No, she's 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 definitely someone to to follow if you're into romance. That's pretty much all she reads is romance and, and a lot of it. So yeah, right. she'll occasionally read a fantasy yeah. or something, but it's not often. <laughs> no. She yeah. used to read a lot more earlier on in her channel, but she's like, you know what? I yeah. love romance. I'm just gonna read romance. Why not? Exactly. Okay. Read a tortured hero. Oh, I love like a tortured hero. <laughs> I don't do as many of them, but okay. I'm gonna say my bit my like the first thing that comes to mind for me is a Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare, which we talked about earlier. But the thing about he's it such is a tortured hero. It's, he's such a tortured hero. So he's been injured in the war and has scarring on his face and thinks that he's like ugly and unlovable. And so it's got like a almost a slight beauty and the beast, I guess, element to it, which I hadn't thought about until I saw Mara did like a video for Read Bliss and included mm-hmm. it on the list of um, Beauty and the Beast retellings. And I was like, oh, I kind of see that. Like I wouldn't have thought of it, but like it's kind of right. got that, that to it. So he's a good one. Do you have other like other good ones? I've got so many tortured heroes. Um, the Beast of Bezek has a good tortured hero. 
All of Kerrigan Burns' books are going to have tortured heroes. Um, Beauty tempts yes, the Yes, Jessica, bye, spoiler alert. I love yes. it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Beauty tempts the Beast by Lorraine Heath is definitely a Beauty and the Beast inspired story. He's such a tortured hero. He's so good, though. Um, Betray Me Not by Michelle Hoff. It's an older title, but I really loved it. Um, do, 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 do. I'm just going through list here <laughs> um, um the loveless texas series by jay crownover has great tortured heroes okay um i'm trying to think like i i don't think i read as many with tortured heroes um yeah i i read a lot of them i like them <laughs> yeah i tend to keep things i love a good bigger, tortured hero yeah yeah um i do like i like a grumpy hero though yeah like i think that's fun like um honestly christine behan does tortured heroes really well okay. any of her series she's gonna have a tortured hero it's her trope it's okay. her um, um the torpedo ink series in particular and they're delightfully smutty as well so i would say for if you want like more of a not so tortured more grumpy than tortured but maybe a little bit but a duke by default by Alyssa cole and yeah, really he's he's kind of curmudgeon-y, but I love yeah. it. <laughs> I love it. It's, been, it's a really good, a good slow burn. Um, another um, one where it's kind of a grumpy sunshine kind of situation is Bewitching by Jill Barnett. He's kind of a, mm -hmm. a duke. He's grumpy about life. And this, awesome. this witch performs a bad travel spell and ends up in his lap. And her name is <laughs> Joyce, And it's the best thing. I love it. More people need to read it. And it is available through KU. So it's easy yeah. to find. Tortured heroes, lots of angst. I'm here for yeah. Look, yes. I mean, Hurricane I, Burn you know, is another queen of a tortured hero. So I actually would say, where where I'm like losing my books now. The hero in Forbidden Promises is kind of tortured. Yeah, a little. He's like a little. He's like low key tortured. Yeah, I mean, it's not um, like Mia Sheridan does a really good tortured hero as well. Archer's voice in particular is a great tortured hero. Yeah, I agree yeah. with you. This is why I probably don't do as much of it. Um, but yeah, The Highlander by Kerrigan Byrne. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. All of Kerrigan Byrne's books have tortured heroes. The <laughs> Hunter is actually my favorite in that series, which is an unpopular yeah. opinion. But I, I mean, yeah, I, I love him it. so much. He is, I just want to give the man a hug. Yes, by Jay I love Jay Crownover. She does a good tortured okay. hero as well. Like it? I, I, I don't. Yeah, see, all my recommendations, like they're not really tortured. <laughs> it's more something else. But like, I want to recommend this book. So, Grip. Okay. Um, by Kennedy. Have you read these? Not yet. Oh my gosh! It's so good. So. It's so good. Um, by Kennedy Ryan. Like, he's not like in general tortured, but he's a little tortured over his love of the heroine and her like disinclination to be with him for a long time. So there's there's that. So he's it's more of like book. a brooding, like <clears throat> yeah. hero than yeah. a tortured hero. Yes. Yes. Um but it's okay. I like a good so brooding good. hero on time yeah. like from time to it's time. It's so like. good. It's also like one of the best depictions of what an interracial interracial relationship is actually like that I've ever read and like getting into like real issues of what that like it's it's such a good. I mean there's a lot of right. drama and like angst and stuff but it's it's, it's a good one. The um, Hunter. Yes, I, I cannot wait for you to enjoy it. it. Good. Cuz I love him. I just want to give him a hug. It's yeah. a man who was raised in jail because his mother um, was a whore and then the guards were basically like raping her constantly and they end up killing her in front of him. And oh so God. tortured and so angsty and is just raised to be this hard, awful man. And he's been hired to kill this actress. Yeah. And at one point, he's trying to, like, seduce her into a corner so he can do his job. And it gets to a point where, like, the sexual tension between them is so high. She says to him, before he's supposed to be killing her, she says, if you don't kiss me, I'll die. And it, it goes from there. Like, it is so... Wow. Good. 
<laughs> oh, I love it. I love okay. it so much. This, so this actually makes me think Brazen and the Beast by Sarah McLean. The hero is a tortured hero. Sarah McLean also. likes a good tortured hero too. Um, a Rogue by yeah. any other name, I think is the one it's called. It's like a pseudo Hades and Persephone retelling too. It's really good. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> so that's pretty much all of the things. Are there other books you want to met? So I have like another, I have like one other book I think that I haven't talked about yet or well, that I, I pulled out. So I'm going to recommend. <laughs> I love Radiant. It. <laughs> it is so fun. So good. Honestly, so I recommend good. Grace Draven as an author, period. I really like yeah. her, his, like her, her other fantasy romance series where the first book is Phoenix Unbound. Love that. Series. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't love the first book in that series, honestly, but I really liked the second book. But I Radiant adored was, the second book for okay. sure. So yeah. The second. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want a good fantasy romance, um, she is great. Radiance in particular is so good because it's um, it's got a political arranged marriage between two people who are like different species and like find each other physically unattractive. But they're like nice people who decide to make the best of things and become friends. And then they like slowly become more fall in love. Really it's cute. and fall in love. I it's really so like cute. it. And, and it is slow burn. The first book is very like low action. Yeah. But the second book like takes you on a ride. So I've not the read the second of the one series. Yet, is it my favorite? But, but yeah. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I just love this a lot. It's slow burn. It's very low angst. All of the, the conflict here is external. Like they have great communication. They have a great relationship. Um, but they have, a, there's like external conflict from political things going on. Um, so I'm going to, I think if you haven't read that one yet, it's a really, really great one. Um, oh, okay. So we have a question. What's the book called with him growing up in jail? We can't hear. I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. The Hunter oh, there we by go. Kerrigan okay. Byrne. The Hunter by Kerrigan Byrne. There you go. It's the okay. second book in the Victorian Rebel series. Yeah. Oh, yay. Reading Radiance. Ah, I love it. It's, so, it's such a good one. It's, it's really so, good. Yes. Good, on love the good flip series. coin, if you want a high angst political fantasy arranged marriage, you want The Bridge Kingdom by Danielle. Oh, Jackson. I want to read those. This is one of the angstiest enemies to lovers I've ever read. The audiobook is fantastic. So I have the audiobook. When Lena has been raised her entire life to kill the king of the Bridge Kingdom. And oh my goodness. So it's this arranged political marriage. She's been told all her life that this kingdom is full of awful, horrible people who are selfish and don't care about her kingdom. When in reality, all they're trying to do is protect their lands. Everybody's trying to steal the lands because this bridge is a huge like um, commerce. What's the word I'm looking for? Like a huge source of commerce in the kingdom. And so her dad really just wants control of the bridge. And he doesn't care about the kingdom at all. He doesn't care about his people. And so Laura and Aaron learn more about each other and learn to trust each other slowly throughout the novel and things happen. Oh my gosh. It's, it's so good. It's just awesome. so good. I Yay. love it. Okay. And so this is also actually, um, it's part of the audible plus catalog. Mm -hmm. So if you have audible plus, um, highly yeah. recommend Great. Yeah, I have it downloaded. Like I have, or I have it like checked out from the catalog. I just haven't read it yet. But uh, yeah, okay, it's so good. good. I it. did listen awesome. to those, and then I loved them enough that I bought physical copies. And I even got the special like Bay Crate hardback for the Trader Queen. Wow! Oh my goodness! I liked it that okay. much. All right, all right. I need to. I need to get on this. Um, so there you go, guys. Hopefully you got a lot of good recommendations for this readathon. You <laughs> like a bunch of things. Do you, does anybody have any last minute questions or requests before we hop off? I, cause I have to like go make some mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> mashed potatoes. Um, but it's just it's Steve and I fun. this year. So we're doing a really quiet Thanksgiving. We're not even doing, mm -hmm. we're going to have steak and green beans and mashed potatoes and call it. I am making lamb in the crock pot. I got like a good recipe. It turns out good and it's super easy. So that'll be fun. 
Yes, Radiance. Yeah, I think if you're not a big romance reader, um, this might be, that could be a good. It just good feels more contemporary novel. than like a romance romance in a lot yeah. of ways. So it's really good. I really it, like it's, it. it's very good. It's, yeah, it's a good one. Yay, I'm excited for it too, guys. It's going to be so fun. I can't wait. So many, so many good books. So I, I thought it would be fun to like get on here and share some stuff. Um, especially since I recently reorganized my romance books. So it's like a good time. Yeah, I recently <laughs> reorganized mine as well. So <laughs> even did a whole video because I'm like, my shelves oh, are nice. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you guys for hanging out. This has been fun doing to the season. Of, okay, I love it. Christmas. Oh, so, okay. I have, if you want holiday romances, I mean, I've done some recommendations other places, but, oh, and actually, you know, good timing. The next episode of the podcast that I do, um, which, like, when is that coming out? Let me look at the calendar. Um, but the next episode is all about holiday romances Very with cool. Bree Hill and uh, Sarah from the Bookish Knitter. Oh, good choices so, for that. Yeah. So that should be really fun. Yeah. So if you guys are looking for holiday romance recs, that episode is going up um, December 8th. So it'll be it'll be live a few days early for patrons and then for everybody December 8th. Um, chapter through podcast. Links are always in my in my description. So if you're looking for more, but then two that I've not read yet that I got from Harlequin recently that I really want to read. I've got um, a wedding one Christmas by Therese Fahari, which this is set in South Africa, which is kind of cool, Ooh. like something a little different. Yeah. yeah, let me know how and, that one is. Yeah, and then this I just love the cover so much. Christmas on Peachtree Lane by Jules Bennett. Like, does this not just oh, dream romance? To you? <laughs> it looks I mean, so cute. Dream, like holiday romance. It's so it cute. looks like cuddly um, cute. I love it. Yes, it's like an op it's an opposites attract small town holiday romance. So like those are ones that should be fun. So for sure. Anyway, um, author for Radiance is Grace, Grace Draven. Draven. I'll type it in here. Grace, Grace Draven. Um, Another one by Grace Draven. Let me grab it. It's really really good. Okay. And have a great holiday, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, and thanks for joining me for a little bit. Um, this has been a really fun kind of interlude. Okay, and so we it's, Christmas tree, which is fun. Okay. It's The Undying King by Grace Draven. It okay. has like Beauty and the Beast notes to it, so you've got a good tortured hero. Um, but it's like he's this king who made a deal and gets to live forever, but in doing so, he's trapped to certain lands and... It's really interesting because this girl, she's okay. cursed in a way. And so she's been told to go to him to cure her curse. And it's it's glorious. I loved it. And it's just a little short novella. And yes, everybody should read this. I'm surprised I haven't heard anybody talking about it. Yeah, I haven't really heard about that one either. Great. Okay, cool. Well, thank you, guys. Um, have a great rest of your day. Enjoy the holiday. Read all of the books. Um, yes, read all fun. of the things. Yes. Uh, and I will be, um, I think, so I think the next time I will be doing, I mean, unless I have time, which I'll probably won't because <laughs> they closed New York public schools. And so like my, I'm now scrambling for things, but yeah. um, the next time I will for sure be live is next week. I think, oh, where is, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. on Thursday, December 3rd at 8 30 PM. Here for I'm doing reading takeover, sprints right? for the romance takeover. Yeah, so for the romance takeover readathon. So if you want to join me, then we'll be doing reading sprints and talking about holiday romances and doing more recommendations then. So okay. No Thanksgiving. Yes. Thank you. Well, yes. yes. So happy happy American holidays. Thanksgiving. Fair enough, but happy holidays going into next month. And uh thank you everybody for joining. Right. This was fun. We'll see you later.